In the news, the cloaked agenda. Today I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to show you a couple of video clips which have been circulating on social media. Now, on the surface, these messages seem to be good messages. Messages of hope. Messages of unity and love and brotherhood. But are they? Or are they just another false facade to push for one world government, that is to say, the New World Order agenda? To reach out and dupe the youth of this world and of this nation and the misinformed and or the bleeding heart do-gooders. Well, you will have to decide that for yourself. I have my own theories as to what the real agenda behind these messages is. And I will be pointing out some of the propaganda used in these videos. First of all, they are not completely accurate nor completely truthful. And they pervade the idea of old fleshly values to push their idealism. In other words, to push the idea that man, in his infinite wisdom, man alone in the flesh, can unite against all prejudice. That man can stop all wars. And that man can fix all the troubles of the world. Pay attention as well to the symbolisms in these videos and to the peoples represented in the second of these two videos. I will also be pointing out a few key points as we go along, including how they use race as a tool to claim that they can stop all racism. But I also want you to notice that not once is God or Christ ever mentioned in either of these videos. However, other religions are symbolized in the uh, video content. What they do here is not a new thing. It is simply a more te technical, uh, logically advanced and up-to-date way of twisting facts and tugging on the heartstrings of humanity. And while the message looks like it's a good message, a message of love and peace and unity, it is in fact anything but. And the message is anything but holy, as we will see. So let's go and look at the first of the two clips. Now this first clip, this first video, was done by a rock band. I'm not going to name them or give any credence to them. But I want you to note the symbolism in this video and the colors. Now, as this video plays, I want you to see that the color red is used quite a bit. And you've got two hands there as if they're praying, and then you've got the fist. And look at the words here. Warfare. World. What this world really needs to give love freely, to become family. One love, one name. Let's come together. It's a one love revolution, a foolproof solution. An end to senseless tragedies, or to all the senseless tragedies. It's a one love revolution. Fight the pollution. Take a stand and let love win. Oh my, doesn't that sound all wonderful? You've got revolution in red, and you've got the gratuitous use of the word one, as in one world government. And where have we seen this fist before? Well, I'll show you that in a minute. Time to rise up. Take a chance. Risk it all for the sake of love. Together we can make this world better and less divided. Again, this message just repeats over and over again. One love, one heart, no shame, blah, blah, blah. I had mentioned, where have we seen this fist before? Well, that's the symbol for the American Communist Party. 
the Communist Party of America. Here is a poster for the American Communist Party. There are many others showing the same symbolism of the red fist, and again you will note that the red was uh, used in that video quite a bit. Scarlet colored red and the word revolution. Now, I think the message behind that is fairly clear, but I'll let you decide how you feel about it. Let's take a look now at the second video. You're going to see a video here speaking of labeling. And rather than talking over this, because I want you to listen to the words, um, I'm just going to put some subtitles up on the screen, kind of pointing out what I see is propaganda and the use of symbolisms, which um, kind of purvey a deeper message. So anyway, let's play this video and we'll just let the person in it, or the people in it, speak. And there's a deeper symbolism even than that, because it's a bunch of people speaking with one voice, in case you don't notice that symbolism. But anyway, here we go. Let's play the video. I am not black. I mean... That's what the world calls me, but it's not me. I didn't come out of my mother's womb saying, hey everybody, I'm black. No, I was taught to be black. And you were taught to call me that, along with whatever you call yourself. It's just a label. See, from birth, the world force feeds us these labels. And eventually we all swallow them. We digest and accept the labels, never ever doubting them. But there's one problem. Labels are not you and labels are not me. Labels are just labels. But who we truly are is not skin deep. See, when I drive my car, no one would ever confuse the car for me. Well, when I drive my body, why do you confuse me for my body? It's my body. Get it? Not me. Let me break it down. See, our bodies are just cars that we operate and drive around. The dealership we call society decided to label mine the black edition, yours the Irish or white edition. And with no money down, 0% APR and no test drive, we were forced to own these cars for the rest of our lives. Forgive me, but I fail to see the logic or pride in defining myself or judging another by the cars we drive. Because who we truly are is found inside. Listen, I'm not here to tell you how science has concluded that genetically we're all mixed and race in the human species doesn't exist or how every historian knows that race was invented in the 15th century to divide people from each other and it has worked perfectly. No, I'm not here to lecture. I just want to ask one question. Who would you be if the world never gave you a label? Never gave you a box to check? Would you be white, black, Mexican, Asian, Native American, Middle Eastern, Indian? No, we would be one. We would be together. No longer living in the era of calling human beings black people or white people. These labels that will forever blind us from seeing a person for who they are but instead seeing them through the judgmental, prejudicial, artificial filters of who we think they are. And when you let an artificial label define yourself, then my friend, you have chosen smallness over greatness and minimized yourself, confined and divided yourself from others. And it is an undeniable fact that where there is division, there will be conflict, and conflict starts wars. Therefore, every war has started over labels. It's always us versus them. So the answer to war, racism, sexism, and every other ism is so simple that every politician has missed it. It's the labels. We must rip them off. Isn't it funny how no baby is born racist, yet every baby cries when they hear the cries of another? No matter the gender, culture, or color, proving that deep down we were meant to connect and care for each other. 
that is our mission and that is not my opinion that is the truth in a world that has sold us fiction please listen labels only distort our vision which is why half of those watching this will dismiss it or feel resistance and conflicted but just remember so did the caterpillar before it broke through its shell and became the magnificent butterfly well these labels are our shells and we must do the same thing so we can finally spread our wings human beings were not meant to be slapped with labels like groceries and supermarkets DNA cannot be regulated by the FDA we were meant to be free and only until we remove them all and stop living and thinking so small will we be free to see ourselves and each other for who we truly are So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, two videos, both of them promoting unity and oneness, but no mention of God, plenty of mention of love, plenty of seemingly good ideas about removing labels, but you see, this is exactly the method that Satan uses is when he comes as the Antichrist he's gonna make everyone believe that he is the Prince of Peace returning in love for his children when actually his goal is to deceive as many as possible now the people who produce these commercials probably have the best intentions at heart but you can also see the liberal do-gooder bleeding heart messages within them such as the lesbian couple implied i mean they were holding hands and hugging each other the two men face to face putting their foreheads on each other that's not really something that men do like i said it's never a bad thing to preach love and, and unity unless of course you lay all of our father's word to the side and try to reach that goal without God without Christ without the Word of God both of these videos seem to imply that we can reach this goal without God or else they would have mentioned God first of all the guy made a false and blatant claim with that 15th century thing if you go back to the earliest writings I don't care even go back uh, if you go back even before the biblical writings in Hebrew and Greek, you will find that people have always identified themselves as one people or another and by race. So that is utter uh, nonsense. It's actually total bullshit. He says it was created in the 15th century. Well, that is not true. Now, does God love diversity? Of course he does. God created all the races. God created everything that has life in it, whether it be animal or man. If it has the nephesh in it, the soul, and it lives, then God created it. And God loves diversity, which is why he made the races. But anyway, this is just submitted for your approval. I'll probably catch a lot of heat over this, because after all, it does have sort of melancholy, heart-tugging music, and it does purvey a sort of good message, and did you see the gratuitous use of children in this, black and white together? Which there's nothing wrong with that. It would be wonderful if all races could get along with each other. But the simple truth is that it's being used as a propaganda tool. Just as in the first video. With words like revolution. And stopping senseless acts of uh, violence or whatever. Which is a wonderful message. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could all do that? But can we? I seriously doubt it. Anyway, this is just submitted for you to look at and to think about. Make your own decision up. And stay in our Father's Word every day. Use the tools afforded to us. Learn the idioms. Learn the manners of speech. And do the best you can. First of all and foremost, pray to our Father for guidance and wisdom as you understand and study His Word. And always pray for those that walk in darkness, even such as these who probably have the best intentions at heart. May God bless you and thank you for listening. This has been Just Thoughts.